video you can appreciate the technique to evaluate for anterior impingement with the external and internal rotation of the forearm you see the subscapularis tendon sliding underneath the coracoid process in the same section you keep your probe fixed on the coracoid process and just move one end of the probe to get the acromion and you will get the entire length of the coracoacromial ligament the coracoacromial ligament forms the superior boundary of the entire subacromial arch. So the entire supraspinatus tendon slides underneath the coracoacromial ligament. You then move upwards and angle your probe vertically down on the patient. So as the probe stands perpendicular to the skin surface and you will get the acromioclavicular joint. To assess the dynamic, the AC joint has to be seen in relation to its integrity of the capsule, marginal osteophytes and the integrity of the joint itself So, where, for which you need a dynamic maneuver of touching the opposite shoulder and getting the arm back. Once you have done the AC joint evaluation, you just slide the transducer laterally till you reach the lateral end of the acromion. This is the site which you are going to use for evaluation of the lateral impingement. As you can see in the video, I asked the patient to abduct his shoulder and with my probe on the lateral edge of the acromion, I see the entire supraspinatus gliding freely underneath the acromion. If there is any impingement, there would be fluid, also there would be buckling of the tendon fibers and inability of the tendon to slide underneath the acromion. The major posterior landmark is the spinous process of the scapula. The muscle belly superior to the spinous process is obviously the supraspinatus. So you assess the muscle belly of the supraspinatus and you look at the volume as well as the equigenicity with, uh, with the overlying trapezius. And then you slide your probe over the spinous process down inferiorly and the muscle belly that you will get is infraspinatus. So as you move your probe towards the shoulder joint, you see that the tendon forms close to the lesser tuberosity and as it inserts onto the lesser tuberosity, you can elongate your probe and get the entire tendon in longitudinal axis as it sort of inserts onto the posterior aspect of the greater tuberosity. In the same setting, if you just move your probe slightly medially, you see the posterior glenoid labrum. And this is where you would assess for the posterior impingement. You ask the patient to keep the hand on the opposite shoulder and then try and get it back to its normal neutral position. As you do this, you can see the sliding on the infraspinatus over the posterior glenoid labrum without any impingement. There has to be a free sliding of the muscle belly over the posterior glenoid labrum. This is also the site where you would look for minimal intra-articular fluid. If you see a separation between the glenoid and the humeral head, then you will appreciate minimal amount of fluid in this section. If you move your probe slightly medially and superiorly, you will get the spinoglenoid notch. This is specially useful when you have wasting of the muscle fibers and you have to evaluate for compressive neuropathy and hence the easiest way is identify the posterior glenoid labrum and move your probe superiorly as well as medially till you see the depression in the bone and you appreciate the artery and the nerve within the spinoglenoid notch. Thank you.